Hey, hello, welcome to the North Downey Church of Christ. I'm David Moorhead. I hope you are doing very, very well today. Um, it's, what is this? this is a, today we're recording the last day of April. We're running into May. Uh, I guess if you're a Disneyland fanatic, you know, they opened up today. Uh, I don't know whether they're charging $150 a person. I don't know. They charge a lot of money to go in there. And, but I'm glad I'm not going. I don't need to go. There's been years. I can't remember how long it's been, but it's been a long, long time. I know, oh yes, I do remember one time. No, that was our honeymoon. My wife and I went on honeymoon. That's all we could afford. I That's, went enough. That was enough, huh? That was enough of the experience. Uh, we may have gone another time, but anyway, that's that's to the side. No screaming allowed on the rights. Uh, no, no what? Screaming. Oh yeah, they can't scream and you have to wear your mask and everything. So no happiness in Disneyland, I guess. Anyway, uh, anyway, like I said, hope you're doing well and uh, the sun is out. We're you know edging toward uh, summertime and everything. And that's a good thing. So, um, we, we're going to kind of breeze through our announcements because we're doing something completely different than we have before. You may see the board behind me and I'm going to mark on it and, and all that good stuff um, so that we'll get into our topic. And our, our topic we're going to look at called Basic Bible. So you remember last week we, we finished Acts. And so today I'm going to just go through, uh, Not we're not going to go through a survey of the Bible. If you were with us in the church here, it took us, what, five years? to go through a survey of the Bible. We still didn't finish Revelation. And I hope everyone forgets about that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll have to go back and deal with Revelation sometime. But we're gonna do a little different and, and, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's, it's something that will be helpful for all of us and uh, it'll help us understand our Bible a little bit more. So we'll be talking about that in just a moment. We want to keep in mind uh, some people for our prayers. Of course, we just received news of some people that, um, some of you who, are, who may have been members or are members here may remember some of these names. We, we just received this uh, text message from Robert. Uh, and um, he mentioned here that, uh, uh, Jim Scott, if I remember Jim Scott, he had a, a store that sold televisions and I think he repaired televisions and everything. And uh, he and Edwina and their family were strong members here, I think until about 1987 or something like that. And uh, then they moved away and I believe it was out there near Temecula. We hadn't seen them since except maybe Oh, about two or three years ago, maybe a little bit more than that, they came by and visited us here at North Downey. Um, and well, uh, Edwina was his, is his wife's name, and so her husband Jim passed away recently, and we want to keep uh, them in our prayers. And also Mike Burgess, maybe you might remember him. He is Owen Burgess's brother. He also passed away, but on April the fifth. So we're learning a lot of things. These things very uh, late in time. And then uh, a man named Bill DeRoe. There, some of these names you may not know at all. I asked some of the people around the table, they don't remember, but they're like, oh. But anyway, but Bill DeRoe, he was a member of this congregation back in the 80s as well. He, and I don't recall his wife's name, uh, but I remember that he worked for Toyota. He, he re, I think he gave tune-ups or something to their cars at some Toyota dealership. But anyway, they were very good members here many, many, many years ago. And I believe they went on, they moved over to uh, Garden Grove and they were a member of the Garden Grove Church. And so uh, Bill Durow, he has, a, has some eye problems that, we, uh, that I just learned about. And then Robert's brother, David, uh, last Sunday, we, uh, it was announced that David's brother, that Robert's brother, David, had, I believe he, he suffered a stroke. And I, I'm not sure if that's still the case. They did have some emergency procedure uh, that I think it had to deal with a blood clot and such. And so they, they took, let me see if I'm just looking back real quick here. I don't have that. Anyway, uh, it's something to do with, I think it was a blood clot that he had. So now he is apparently doing well, but is slowly recovering from the surgery. And of course, Lafania, um, who is uh, doing well, but is suffering some skin effects from the uh, radiation that she's receiving. So we have that and we have um, Teresa. Teresa. We keep her in prayers and as uh, she's recovering from the loss of her husband and her son. 
uh, Georgina and uh, Oscar. Oscar. No, he's dealing with dementia. And 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 who? Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, thank you. My wife signs to me. Dennis. We'll keep Dennis in our prayers. Lots of people to keep in our prayers, huh? And and the congregation here. So. Uh, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then we will get into our lesson for today. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, you are wonderful. You are a wonderful blessing to us. You love us and uh, shower us with mercy. And um, as we are told in your word, your mercies are, are new every morning. Every day you show that to us. And, and we're so appreciative of it uh, as we understand our place with you in this world and life and such. And so thank you, God, for your mercy and grace that you show to us. Thank you for blessing us uh, with life. Thank you for blessing us with living in this country, even with all of its faults and all the problems that are going on here. We still, even at just this moment at least, uh, have freedom to uh, read our Bibles and things and gather together. And we also have enough prosperity in this country to eat well and to enjoy life over here. We know that much of that is not the issue in the rest of the world. Many parts of the world, the people are starving and suffering and such. So we are grateful to you, God, that you place us here at this time and this place in, in uh, the history of the world. And may we be um, able and willing servants. Thank you, God, for that so much. Of course, we do have people that we're concerned about, families. We think of Edwina Scott, who is uh, now um, going through the loss of her husband, Jim. They had been married many, many years, and we rem remember that they were members here for many years, very active in the church. I'm not even sure if they were the first or charter members, but we want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, Jim has passed away, and I believe they had three boys. And so we pray for your blessings on the Scott family and the children as they go through this loss. And then we thank Father of Mike Burgess, uh, and the, um, who is um, a, a brother of one of our, our late elder, uh, Owen Burgess. And uh, Owen passed away about three years ago, and now his brother has passed away as well. So they're both with the Lord at this time, and we, we pray for him, pray for those who are around him, their families, that they may be blessed with your comfort, as well as comfort from uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. We think of Bill DeRoe, and uh, another former member who has uh, problems with his eyes. And we don't know the exact nature of that. We do pray for your healing for him and as whatever medical activities are going on that that may be helpful for him. Uh, Lafania, of course, as she is going undergoing radiation treatment. And now there are, I suppose, these are kind of expected side effects, some skin problems that come with that. Uh, we do pray for her and pray for um, her healing and that she has the strength to get through this physical as well as spiritual and emotional because these things can be very uh, difficult uh, as they, they endure them. Teresa and uh, her losses, we pray for her healing and your strengthening for her and that family. Uh, for Dennis, and you'll bless him. Georgina, we pray for your blessings upon him, upon her, I should say, and her husband, uh, Tomas, and of course, uh, there's uh, Oscar and who else? Dennis. And Dennis, I mentioned, yeah, keep Dennis and Oscar in our prayers. Uh, so many people, God, we, we, we lift them all before you. Lots of concerns that are going on in our lives. And so we pray for your blessings upon them. We pray for your blessings on this nation as we, as a nation, we're going through some very tough times and we may see some really bad economic times ahead at, because of all the the, the spending that is going on by the government is going to have a powerful effect on the country. So we, we pray for them and pray for those representatives and the leaders and such that they may turn their heads to see you and, and bow to you. Uh, guide us through our study tonight. Lord, thank you for your word. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, um, we are going to, as I said, we're going to embark on kind of a different type of study We've normally, we've gone through the book of Acts and normally we, I like to go through these expository studies where we're looking through different books of the Bible and verse by verse and all that's very helpful. But what I'm going to do is kind of give you an overview of the Bible. And uh, the only place you have to turn, I have one place we're gonna look at in a little bit in 2 Timothy um, uh, chapter two, but, or chapter three, 
but we will get there in just a moment. But all you have to do, if you have your Bible, it doesn't matter what kind of Bible you have, your, your outline, your study outline will be the table of contents, right? That's all you need for tonight or today or in the morning, whenever you're reading it. You just need the table of contents. And we are going to look at these and see how these books uh, line up and what they're about. So first some jokes. Uh, excuse me? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's the entree to our jokes. Got to tell you the jokes. Always got to have the jokes. Okay? And very important, make you all laugh. Okay, so all on one page. Right? I got three of them. Oh, by the way, do you know why they, invented, why they invited the mushroom to the party? Because he was a fun guy. Like fungus? Fun guy. Okay. And you know why they kicked him out of the party? There was too much room. Okay. All right, uh, here's one. Did you hear about the houses next door to each other that fell in love? It was a long distance relationship. Okay. I t person says, I don't trust those trees in our yard. They're shady. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, when I want to call a family meeting, somebody said this, when I want to call a family meeting, I just turn off the Wi-Fi and wait for them all to gather. Because they're saying, what happened to the Wi-Fi? That's it. You've had your jokes for the week. Hold on to them and cherish them, okay? So, all right. So, uh, we're... Oh, yes, it'll be Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. We're going to be looking there in just a little bit. So, huh? Where are we going? We're, not yet, not yet, not yet. Hold on, don't. We're just going to look at the table of contents. Table. We, have, table. we have some people are just so eager, so eager to jump in the middle of this. Okay, so what about the Bible? Uh, first of all, we'll, we'll start off with the word Bible. Um, it comes from the Greek word biblos, right, which means book. And that's a problem. You know, we, and it has given this impression to the entire world or many people in the world, if they don't understand it, is that they think of the Bible as just one book, you know, the Bible. So you might as well just call it the book. And some people do. This is the book, right? But you'd be mistaken to do that because actually it is a, a combination of 66 books, individual books. Uh, it is not one book. Now, we, the reason why we call it the Bible uh, the word Bible really came into fashion after they printed a Bible. You know, the very first printing press by uh, Gutenberg, uh, when they invented the printing press, they went from handwriting and writing scriptures into putting it into uh, combining things into one book. So you had the printing of books and then you had the, you know, you, you have a spine and everything like this and, and how they're glued together. You know, when, when that happened, no one ever seen anything like it. It was probably one of the great, uh, you know, inventions. And everyone said, oh, it's sort of like, uh, you know, smartphones today, you know, people, go, oh, what about this? And so you have things like table of contents and all that, a very different way of looking at things. And up until then, everything was handwritten, right? And even after then, there, the poor people still wrote many things. And then prior to this, uh, we are looking at scrolls. So instead of having uh, one book, you had 66 scrolls uh, because that's how they did it in the Bible days. Everything was put on where they were rolled together. You roll them off, that type of thing, and you're able to read. And they were in perfect, you know, how the, well they were written by hand. So they were in perfect boxes, so to speak. So you're able to read these things. So you read, turn a little bit more, read, 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 right? And they went as long as they could, the paper would last. The paper was different. Papyrus, uh, you know, taken from these weeds that you'd see in these wet uh, marshes, things like this. And then the, finally the ability to put them on paper like this uh, coming from trees. So we've come a long way. We take books for granted, but it is truly a, a remarkable achievement for all time. So we have each of these books put in there. And I'm going to show you a few things. I'm going to get up here on the board. So if you'll just uh, close your eyes for just a moment. <laughs> and we're, going to ch we're going to shut this off and then I'm going to go over here. You'll see me standing. So if you want to close your eyes. But don't go to sleep, okay? Or whatever you need to do. Okay, so you, you, uh, Mary has found a scroll to show up there with the scrolls sort of look like this. This is, from, this is a kind of a makeshift scroll 
that Judy made uh, for her Bible class, for the kids' class. You know, and you can um, take this, I'll take this off this thing here. Mm -hmm. if I can undo this. Now I, I think I got, there we go. Now hold on. And it would be like this. Sort of like this. So they have the little things, you know. Of course, I'm sure, uh, the one that Mary picked up probably looks a lot better. But these are some that they made, kind of a nice little project that the kids did. And so everything was on scrolls uh, back then, and that went on for centuries. You know? So, uh, so then you have the issue of the written word that, that these words are written down. Now, uh, some little facts to keep in mind, and you probably have known this, probably have seen this, but I'll put it up here again so you'll know. So we know. Uh, I'll put this out. So I have to turn my back to you. Is this high enough? Is this like good right here? Okay. And you got room all the way to the top. Okay. So there's sixty. Six books sixty six books of the uh, of the Bible. I see a little I guess a, a, is that the uh, is that a glare or something? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Uh, so I hope you can see sixty six books in the Bible. Now how long did it take to write them? There we know it took about two thousand years maybe a little less, to put all, to write each of these to, for 66 books, beginning with Genesis, going all the way to Revelation. Okay? So, how many authors? I think it was about 40 authors, 40 writers. That's the number 40 I was asking you about. There we go, That's there's that word. Part. We got the 40s in there. We've been talking about the letter for the number 40. So you have 66 books, 2,000 years, 40 years, of uh, 40 authors. Now, the big question is this, and you probably have heard things like this. Well, the Bible's fake because uh, all these guys got together in a room somewhere, and they say, okay, you say this, you say this, and they, and they wrote, this came up with this book. Okay, over, for over a 2,000 year period, it's pretty hard to keep consistency. Um, if you have an Encyclopedia Britannica at home, if they still make that thing, or an Encyclopedia, you probably know it may have like 12 different, uh, 12 different uh, sets, books in the set, like maybe, volumes. or volumes, I should say, 12 different volumes in there. Like, I think the Encyclopedia Britannica has like 30. I don't know, we had one at home when I was a kid. Some of them have 12 or whatever. And, uh, and you'll, if you open up the, the, uh, the front of that, you'll find that you'd have a general editor Someone who's a managing editor. So what they do is that they get, it's not the, the one editor who writes the entire encyclopedia, but they bring specialists in from all over. So it could be hundreds of specialists who write the encyclopedia. But they all are managed by this editor. And it takes like maybe 10 years, 20 years like, to put out an encyclopedia because you have to get all these specialists from these different universities and things like this. And they'll say, okay, this is what you're going to write here, this is what you're going to study about, and they all have to do their thing, and then they put it together. So it's about 10 years, okay? So to keep the, the quality of the, um, of, of the encyclopedia uh, proper, uh, they would have to go that time frame, right? So somebody has to go along with what the editor is saying. And again, after the end of 10 years, they print them up, they sell it to the public, and then they make a new set later on down the road. Well... What about who managed this? To keep the word of God consistent. And there's a consistent theme from all the way from Genesis up to Revelation. It's pretty easy to talk about it. But over a 2,000 year period, how do you keep it consistent? Well, who's the manager of all of this? God. Uh, God, that's right. Hey, you're cheating, huh? Yeah, that's right. God is the manager. And why do we know that? It's this word, if I can put it up here, inspiration, uh, that the authors of, the, of these books in the Bible were all inspired by God to write these things. How we know, well, how do you keep it consistent over 2,000 years? I don't know anything that could be consistent 2,000 years. Do we know anyone 2,000 years ago who started a project and is continuing today to, you know, 2021? No one does that, right? That's, that's impossible. And to keep the quality consistent. We can hardly keep, our, keep anything consistent in the last hundred years. But so you have this 2,000 year period, 40 authors. Many of them did not know each other. Most of them did not know each other in different ages. 
and they and they write these things under the management of God. And it's called uh, inspiration. This is where I'd like you to turn in the Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Yeah, uh, snippet, information snippet. Oh, inf information snippet? Yeah. Okay. In Spanish, library is biblioteca. Oh, biblioteca. Which means a collection of books, mm -hmm. like which it. comes from the Latin root biblios. Mm -hmm. In the Bible's Bible, which is a collection of books. So mm -hmm. people that are Latin speaking, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, I think the word Bible makes more of a sense to them, especially since the Latin, mm -hmm. one of the first ones to print the Bible. <clears throat> if you speak to someone from those languages, they understand it as a collection of books, mm -hmm. whereas Americans as one book. That makes sense. Um, in fact, uh, I've heard it described as. A, an encyclopedia. So we think of an encyclopedia as a collection of books. I heard it described as an encyclopedia of books, but biblioteca, that sounds interesting that you have, it's a, it's a library, in essence, it's a library of books that are all contained in one subject. So as I said, God would have to be the manager, and in order to keep this, this quality and, and the message consistent, we read about it here in 2 Timothy 3.16 where it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So there's God, right? Well, he gets all the credit. He's a managing editor and is profitable for doctrine. So that's a teaching, right? For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All these are, are covered in these books. So somewhere along the way from the Ten Commandments to different books, it's illustrated, right? Uh, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So that is why we see this, this quality going on. Now, the second thing I wanted to bring up, besides the inspiration of all this, is this. Um, and, and see, this kind of a trick thing. It's a trick question I'm going to ask you. I keep looking at this picture. Maybe. It's a trick question. Um, it is this. Um, yes, true or false? The Bible is filled with all truth. True or false? True. Right off the right off the bat, somebody's going to say true, Me. but the answer is no. Somebody said, "What? How dare you say that?" Well, no, no, no. The Bible does teach truth, but it's also it also records the lies and the false teaching of humans, the lies of Satan. That's not truth, right? The, the what, what what Satan told Adam and Eve that was all, those are all lies. But the Bible records it, right? And so we're not following Satan, right? It is not that, you know, he, he lied to Jesus, okay? We have lies that are, and, and false ways of living that are recorded in the Bible. Why, you know, so it's, it's not a book that's filled with everything is, is, in other words, truthful for us. They're basically, they're, the truth that God wants us to know is in the Bible, but it also records the falseness of false teachers. So it's important to, to be careful about that. Some people will use that to, could, to trick us, to say, well, uh, if, if, the, if the Bible is filled with truth, then that means Satan was telling the truth. No, 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 no. It records the lies of, of Satan and evil people, but it also ha contains in it truth. It, get, it gives us stories of people who have failed in their attempts to to live uh, in a rebellious fashion. That's not a good way, of not, that's not a truthful way of living, right? So the Bible has all of this information. It tells us lots of things about people and about uh, righteousness and sin and, and, and goodness and how to be saved and all of this. So these are important things. So now I'm going to do something. Let's turn back to the very first page or back to the page of, what is it called? The table of contents. So the recordings are true. It it's is recording a, things that happened, whether they be positive or negative. The recording, the recounting is true. That is true. That they, is true. It's not embellished. It's not biased. The Bible is 100% true in the sense that everything in it happened or was said or was done. Yes. Yes, and that's probably a better way of putting it rather than say every word is there that it comes from the mouth of God. No, you're correct. It, re it truthfully and accurately records the fact of sinners, of lies, 
but then it shows us the way of life, right? So I'm going to re I'm going to erase erase this and take this down. Now I'm going to show you some interesting things, and that should take us through here. Are you going to bring up about that video I showed you about the first verse of the Bible, how it explains the whole Bible and all its different decodings? Yeah, pro in a in a future broadcast, we're going to talk about when we get that's, into detail. That's good. That's good. We're going to talk about detail and it's a, and and the depth of the verses, okay? But first of all, we're going to see how these books, and I'm going to spend some time on the Old Testament today, right? And so that, because that, that's, uh, we know that there are 39 books. So this is what we're going to do. And I hope you excuse the fact that I'm turning my back to you. So we know that there's 39 books of the Old Testament. Now you have the first five, is Genesis, and I hope you can read this, to Deuteronomy, you know me, that's a long word, right? You're getting tiny in the writing. Okay, that's all right, okay. So these are five books, okay? That's the first five books. This is known to the Jews as the Torah. You may have heard that word. Is that right, visible there? So this is called the Torah. Very respected section of the Bible for them. When they look at the Old Testament, they call this the Torah, the books of the law. Okay. And then we have another section here. We have history books. Books, okay? So what I'm going to do is that, and I won't write them all down because there's a lot, but you'll be able to see, I'll read them and uh, you, we'll just read them right here. If you'll look in your table of contents, we look there in the first five books were Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So I put a little line under that for me. Then you have this other book called the History Books. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. And that comes up to how many books? 12 books. You can write Josh to Esther. Okay. Josh to Esther. Okay, we'll do that. So Josh to Esther. Sorry, I have to write some more. Because okay. people might be taking notes. Okay. So Josh to Esther, right? And that's what? Twelve books. All right? Then you have the next section here. It's the, um, the poetry books. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. So these are from Job. It's not Job. I told you a story about that one time. What is it? When I was in school, and we had a freshman, uh, one of the freshmen came in, we, we were taking a class, title of the class was Job and the Problem of Suffering, you know, because he went through the books. And, we were, and I think about the fourth or fifth class, uh, this one young lady who wasn't quite familiar with the Bible, she raised her hand and she said, uh, when are we going to talk about getting a job? And the teacher didn't know, what, what, what are you talking about? I says, I thought this was the problem, how to get a job and the suffering of not getting a job. And he had to very patiently explain to her, no, that's a, a book in the Bible, the book of Job. It's not about getting a job. Well. <laughs> There's an invisible E at the end. Okay, it's a E in Job, okay. So you do this, okay, yeah, if you could put it, this is Job. And it goes all the way up to what book? Song of Solomon. You're at the end of the video. Okay. I'm at the end of the video or the page? Oh, the frame. Okay. So I'll just move this over here. Sorry. We're learning. No, you're good. You're good. But that's the end. That's okay. Okay. You're at the so now end. that makes up five books. Okay. Now we go into another part. Uh, the other, and I'll have to go down here, okay? So I'm going to have to erase a little bit of this. We have room on the bottom. Okay. You okay. have room okay. all the way to the bottom. Okay. The voice you hear is, is the director basically telling me I could fall off the, <laughs> off the thing. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You can go all the way down. We can go all the way down here. Okay. So now we have another uh, group of books. 
And those are called the prophet, the books of the prophet, prophets. Okay. So, by the way, let me put this up here. These books are known as poetry. And I'll explain these books in just a moment. You have to put law back. Law. Okay, these are law books. Okay. So, the prophets, if you'll notice, go from what? And so you have, um, okay, so we start here with uh, uh, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Uh, and uh, yeah, Ezekiel and Daniel. So those are the major prophets. I'm so you, huh? Isaiah. Oh, so yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, 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 sorry, thank you. Yeah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. They're called the. So we have two parts of this. They have what are called major prophets. The reason why they're called majors because they're just big. The books are big. So if you'll, if like Isaiah goes on for what, 65 chapters or 66 chapters, uh, he's, you know, Jeremiah goes on for many, many chapters. Lamentations is just a little book and I'll explain why. Ezekiel goes on for a big, many chapters. Daniel goes for a lot of chapters, right? So that's why they call them major prophets. It doesn't mean that they're better than other prophets. Just say they're big, their, their books are big. Then we have the books of the minor prophets. Now the major prophets, there's five of these, right? And I'll, 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 don't worry about it, I'll give you some more information here. Then you have over here, the minor prophets. Now don't get lost here, where we'll explain, I'll give you the, the message here, how this all works. The minor prophets are right here. It's that area that if you're trying to read through the Bible, if you even get through the big books like Isaiah, because people kind of give up after a while because they say, oh, there's so much reading here. It's these obscure, at least to many people, the obscure books of the Old Testament. They're not obscure in their message, though. Uh, you have Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Now, Aren't those fun words to say? <laughs> so those are the minor prophets, okay? So with the minor prophets, what, it comes about 12, right? So That's like two minors per major. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> two minors for the major? <clears throat> two, huh? Two minor prophets equal one major prophet almost. I guess you could say that. Yeah, you could say that, I suppose you could. Uh, okay, so... Very good, thank you. So, so what are the what are these all about? And and why are they in this order? There's a reason. There's there's a method to this, and it isn't an order that man put together. It's basically an order that once again kind of covered by God because they cover different types of uh, things. Okay, so the first five books of the Old Testament here, Genesis to Deuteronomy, are known as the Law. So in that we have the story of creation and uh, the development of the nation of Israel when the call of Abraham. And then of course you have uh, the book of Exodus that we're going through on Sunday morning. It tells about the children of uh, Israel, the, the Israelites who were in Egypt and then finally called out of Egypt. And you know, God led them with Moses, taking them out in the wilderness and such and coming into the promised land. Then you have the, uh, the book of Leviticus, is a book of, uh, a book of, uh, of worship and telling them how setting up and teaching of the responsibility of the priests of the Old Testament, the tab tabernacle and such. The book of Numbers that chronicles uh, more of the, not only uh, counting, they call it Numbers because it's the counting of all the tribes and things, but also some of the attempts that they had at entering the Promised Land and some of the preparation for that. And finally, the book of Deuteronomy is a book, uh, is, a, is a combination, I think, three speeches that are given by Moses. You know, as the children of Israel, so you have like a, there's this 40 year period that they go through in Exodus. So you have a long time, many, many years going through this. OK, and then they're, uh, they're entering the promised land. What does Deuteronomy mean? It, uh, Deuto, I think, is with the, uh, the five, the fifth book. I don't know what I thank you for 
Did Rami look that up? <laughs> what does Dutro mean? I think it, what does it mean? The, uh, <sighs> I figured it would mean speeches or something. Yeah, it is. It, well, it's a book of speeches that we have here. And I'm trying to recall. You just asked me a question. My Part of my, my brain is not working there, but we'll get to you in just Sorry. a moment. Anyway, it's okay. No, don't be ashamed. <laughs> I get questions all the time that I can't answer. Anyway, a uh, little interesting question. People said, well, who wrote those four books? They're, they're not four authors, it's one author, and the author who wrote these books is Moses. So they're called the books of Moses, too. Some might say, well, Moses came up in Exodus. What does he know about Genesis? That's where inspiration comes in. He was inspired to write the history of the Old Testament, and then they get over here all the way up to Deuteronomy. The, now, what is it? It means five? The title Deuteronomy derived from Greek. This means a copy or a repetition of the law rather than second law. There you go. As Very the good. world's etymology seems to suggest. Okay. Although Deuteronomy is presented as an address by Moses, scholars generally agree that it dates from a much later period. No, don't go there. That's a documentary history. hypothesis and we will get into that. Well, that's what it says. Anyway, yeah, you're liberal. <laughs> that and is... It, um, and Hebrew... Uh, Fifth book, Jewish Torah, where it is called Devarim, which means words of Moses. Okay, so that's probably more proper. That last part about scholars are, are dating at different times, that's called the documentary hypothesis. We will not get into that now. I'll talk about that another time. So it means so, rep repetition or a copy of... A repetition. And that's basically, laws. it's not a new law. He's basically going over because you have a whole generation of people ready to go into the promised land. Moses gives them the direction. Next you have the history books. They go from Joshua to Esther and they cover the entire history after they entered into the promised land. First of all, you have Joshua who led the children. He kind of took over from Moses. Moses goes away, dies. He doesn't enter the promised land. He becomes a leader and he brings them all the way into, obviously God is leading him into the promised land. They, they, they go through the recording of various wars and fights and things like this to people to settle that land. So they settled the land. With Jericho. With, you know, after they promised, they, Jericho is one of the towns that went down. Then you have Ai, you have all these different parts. And the, and the land of Israel that we know of today is divided up by these tribes. So it's interesting, you begin to see, okay, all of these tribes that were part of the nation of Israel, different families. So it, it covers an entire area. We can look at the map, but at another time. That's Joshua. Then you have a section called Judges that comes after that. And Judges is a book about, uh, well, after Joshua dies, uh, you know, he couldn't live forever. You know, everyone wanted him to keep on going, but he dies. So now a lot of things happen. Uh, when you go, th when you look at the nation, it starts to break up. They're there, but they start to quarrel with each other. They didn't have one leader to kind of guide them. And you had these judges that ran different areas. So Samson was a judge. He wasn't a great judge, but you know, it records his failures as well as his triumphs. And you have some very good judges, some not so good. And they were sort of like, I guess today, like county supervisors in a way. They kind of ran those areas, uh, but that's what they did. And so they, you, the, you did have the priests and you had the tabernacle and people worshiping them, but they, they had some different issues. So at the end of Joshua, uh, the, at the end of Judges, you come to a place called First and Second Samuel. Now, so first and second, or no, you come to Ruth. I'm sorry, we we're missing Ruth. I'm sorry. I thought Samson was a slave. Well, uh, Samson sort of became a slave after he get, he allowed his hair to get cut, which is and be careful who your barber is. But that's another story. And so uh, he uh, we, we get into the story of Ruth. It was an interesting story. Uh, we you know how she um, it's sort of a, a story of love and how. Uh, this man kind of took care of her and she was uh, from Moabite and all of this and sort of it, it shows the uh, the concern of a person and basically how the tribe was saved now if you'll it, it's if you look at the story of Ruth it's one of those stories that figures into the history of Jesus Christ as you'll know and I, as I've said many times uh, in my preaching is that you will find kind of a thread 
that runs all the way from Genesis all the way through the, uh, the Old Testament that leads to Christ. They're very careful about counting people, families, and that type of thing. Next, uh, we come to First and Second Samuel. And uh, sec Samuel became kind of the leader of the nation. Uh, he was, he was a, a prophet and a priest and sort of like a king, sort of like Jesus in a way, but he, was, he kind of ran the whole show. He was very respected. Uh, he wasn't a judge, but there were judges around. But he kind of brought leadership to the people. He taught them about the Lord. He kind of caused a revival. And then there was that point when he had two bad sons. Now you think about the great guy here, uh, you know, but he had two bad sons. Story is, by the way, we back up a little bit. The backstory of that is the story of Hannah, who did not, you know, was trying to conceive a child and she could not conceive a child. And she went to the, 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 the tabernacle to pray to God about this. The presiding priest at the time was kind of an old man who just, he lost control of his own sons and his own sons were very bad and all of this. And, but he saw this woman, Hannah, and she is praying and he thought she was drunk Long story short, uh, he blessed her and she went on to have a child and that child was Samuel. And she promised God that, you know, if I had this son, I'll give him back to you. So she did. And uh, at one point she finally released him and he went to work in the tabernacle with Eli. And he went on after Eli died, uh, Samuel went on to become the leader. Okay, so he writes these two books, First and Second Samuel. What does he write about? Well, he writes about the, the new king. Why did they have a king? Because the people didn't like Samuel. They got tired of Samuel. Why? Because he had bad sons. Hmm, seems to happen in preacher families, but that's another story, right? So he had two bad sons too, and uh, they were making things look bad. And so the people said, we're tired of this. We want a king. And so they went to Samuel, we want a king. And he's like, oh man, what's going on? Don't you like me? So he went to God and prayed about it, and God said, don't you worry about it. It's not that they're rejecting you, they're rejecting me as a king. And so listen to what they say and give him a king. And so he went out and gave him a king. He said, okay, hey, you know, if that's what you want, just remember he's gonna raise taxes on you. Biden. Hmm, sounds like we heard about that. And <laughs> yeah, Mr. Biden, you know, raise taxes on you. He's gonna take your daughters and make them part of his harem. You're, he's gonna, you know, take your young men and make them part of a, an army. Uh, yeah, he's going to do all kinds of things. But if that's what you want, they said, yeah, we want a king. He says, okay, you're going to get it. And so they said, we'll choose a king. No, he, he would choose the king because God would show him. So you have, he chose a man named Saul and because uh, he brought him on. So Saul is now the king of the land and Saul reigns for 40 years. 40 years. Uh, and so we have these, these this multiple of 40 years. And I'll put them up here. You have... Uh, Saul, oh, I, that one, that's too high, huh? Yeah. Okay, so I don't have any, I'll put it right here. So you have Saul, and then David, and then uh, Solomon. And I hope you're gonna read all this, right? Yeah. So what about, what's going on here? Uh, Saul, he reigns for 40 years. He's a 40-year king, and he goes crazy, loses his mind, you know, He's got power crazy, but uh, he, he stopped being God's man. God chose him, and then uh, he, re he turned on God. Basically, he turned, re uh, depended on himself. Uh, he, he became crazy, and you might remember David at the time had, had killed Goliath, and everyone loved David because he was good looking. He was a rock, rock star back then because they said, wow, David killed his, Saul killed his thousands. David kills his tens of thousands. And Saul was very jealous of him, became paranoid, tried to kill him. And eventually it came down to the point where Saul and his son dies in battle. David becomes the king. David reigns for 40 years. Right? And so here he is for 40 years. He's reigning for 40 years lives all the way up to the time. Of course, you know about his affair with Bathsheba and all of this. He has, he has different sons, but he has one of them from that affair. One baby dies, but then from that affair. And his uh, son is named Solomon. So when David dies, a lot of drama there about how things, who was gonna be king, but eventually it was Solomon. Okay. 
And then after that, the kingdom starts to break up. So that brings us into that next book after 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel is 1 and 2 Kings. 1 and 2 Kings talks about, uh, it's sort of a duplicate in a way, as, the, as well as Chronicles, sort of a duplicate of what we read in 1 and 2 Samuel, but they go a little bit deeper because they talk about the kingdom. And what happens is that instead of one solid, solitary kingdom, like they had under here, the kingdom breaks up because there's a division. They break up into north and south. I know this gets complicated, so just hang with me. We'll be fine. Don't run away. Okay. Uh, but they break up into north and south. And what you know what they broke up over? Same thing that we're arguing about today. The big T, taxes. You know, uh, they, The people said, we don't want this anymore. We're tired of paying all the taxes and everything. And so... The king that took over after David, after Solomon, was Solomon's son. He said, no, I'm going to make it tougher on you. I'll make it easier. But they want, you know, they said, don't be so hard on us. Your dad was you know, crazy about it. And they said, well, I'll be tougher than him. And so there's a division. You have the people on, on David's side and all of this and Solomon's side. They went on and formed their own kingdom. And that would be the southern kingdom, Judah and Benjamin. And then you have the other kingdom. That was a northern kingdom, and that was run by a man named Jeroboam. And from there, you had a number of kings all the way up from the north, and then the kings from the south. It's a long story and such like this, but these books, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, talk about it all the way to the point when eventually the kingdom, uh, the northern kingdom, is taken away by Assyria. So that's a long story, right? So off they go. And then eventually the southern kingdom is taken away by Babylon. So those books end. So what happened? Well, there was prophesied, that, and, I, and we're going to have to carry this on until next week too. It was prophesied that God, God was upset at the southern kingdom. First of all, he didn't like what they were doing in the north. He was upset at them because they were worshiping idols. And it led to child sacrifice and and all these awful things, and they're doing all these things to other countries, and, and God didn't like it. He says, okay, he sent people to warn them, and they wouldn't listen to all of this. So eventually, what happens? Uh, they're taken over by another kingdom. They're taken away. All the people are driven out. They're gone. Then you have the southern kingdom. This is the kingdom that supposedly was saying, we, we're staying with God. The northern kingdom, as I said, they were worshiping a calf. They were worshiping idols. And they and God said, okay, I'm going to let you guys go. That's the way you are. You don't love me. You don't want to follow me? So the southern kingdom started to do the same thing. Boom. And eventually they're taken away from into Babylon. And so prophets about that time, and we're going to jump ahead in a little bit, they'll explain it, began to say, okay, God's going to punish you. And I'm paraphrasing it. But you're going to come back. You're going to be over there. Uh, you're going to be taken away into, into Babylon. And they prophesied this about Babylon 100, uh, you know, 100 years before it happened. That you're going to be there. You're going to be there about 70 years. So, you know, relax, take it easy. You're going to be there. And then you're going to come back. So you'll notice Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther. Ezra and Nehemiah are about the children of Israel returning from Babylon. Actually, Persia had taken over Babylon. So now you have the children of Israel who are uh, you know, those who are left, it's another generation. 70 years is a long time, right? So 70 years from 2021 takes you to 1951. Oh my gosh, I just see Why? <laughs> anyway, that's a long 70 years. So 70 years pass and you have a whole new generation comes up. Don't worry, I'm going through a little crisis of my age. Being 40 is tough. Okay, but anyway. So then... Something Times like, two. Huh? Times two. Times two, almost, that's right. So here it is. Uh, so they're there. You have a whole new generation comes up in, 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 the, in Persia, in Babylon. Persia takes over. And they say, it's time for us to go back. How do they know? God directed it to happen, directed Darius, who is a king of Persia, to send the, to let the children go. Okay, let, let the Israelites go back to the promised land. And so... They, they, as they go over there and these other books are going to talk about it, there's a group who goes over. Not everybody goes, 
but there's a big group that goes over there. When they get over there, you have these two leaders. You have Ezra, who records all of that. He's over there, and he's kind of a leader, but he's also a person who said, let's build the temple. Let's go back and rebuild the temple. What happened? The temple had been destroyed by Babylon when they came in. So let's rebuild the temple. So he's rebuilt, he's there and he's leading that and, uh, and put up, the, I should say, rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. And then Nehemiah was in charge of those rebuilding the temple. And so Nehemiah reports, records about all the people who are against them. There were people who were living in the area. Remember, people moved into the area and they, and they said, no, Nehemiah, you again, and they're complaining. So uh, it's a great story. The book of Esther as we said, unless you read a little bit deeper, is, is a book in the Bible that doesn't mention God, but it mentions his providence. And if you look a little deeper, as Mary's pointed out, that there mentions, uh, you know, has God in it. Anyway, the book of Esther is about all those Jews who were left behind, who didn't go. They decide to stay. Just like, you know, so you wonder where all these Jews came in from. All the, they decide to stay in Persia and Babylon. And so it's about the story of what happened to those folks who were back there. And maybe they didn't want to worship God. Maybe they weren't, you know, devoted. And so this is the story about, in essence, of how Esther, the queen, remember she got there because she won a beauty contest. Woohoo! There she is, Miss Persia. Bert Parks, remember him? No, you don't. Anybody remember Bert Parks? He was the host of the Miss America contest. And, uh, you know, they had all these women and here she got all the beauty treatments and everything. And here she won the beauty contest to be the, the wife of the king of Persia. And so she was the Queen Esther. Okay? And uh, so she was the one who helped to save, long story made short, the children of Israel from extinction. Well, my time is running out. We're going to stop right there. And then next week we're going to pick up and talk about Job, Psalms, Proverbs, and then I'm going to show you why they are in the order that they are in. Because the, if this isn't just a random order. There's a reason why that order is right there. And we'll talk about that next time. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, we're going to take, don't just close your eyes for just a moment. I'm going to sit down. And then I'll come back and I'll be there. Okay. Okay. I hope you didn't sleep too long. It's just a matter of a second, right? So um, that was, that was, that's a survey. And I know it takes a little while, but as I said, uh, once we, we get through all of these, I'm um, explaining in a very short, a very, very short fashion, summary fashion, what these books are about. And I will also talk to you about what is called the telephone number of the Bible. And I don't think you want to miss that, right? Don't miss it. There's, there's a telephone number that you can call. Well, maybe not call. But the Bible has a telephone number. We'll talk about it next time. So uh, so I hope you find this help. Huh? A quick question. A quick question, okay. From the last minor prophet, which is the end of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. how much time between then and Jesus born? Very good question. And uh, boy, that's jumping ahead, but that's a good question. <laughs> What, uh, the, how much time elapsed bet between Malachi, which is the last book of the Old Testament, to the book of Matthew, till the time Jesus shows up on the scene. Well, Matthew was written after Jesus. Yeah, right? that's right. So, but the time Matthew records, but you're right. How much time between Malachi and the time Jesus shows up? 400 years. Really? It's a 400 years of, they call it the 400 years of silence. And it's during that time that what is called the Apocrypha is written. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about that too. And books like Enoch and some of the others. Will, but we'll, we'll get into that in just a little bit uh, next time. And, but I'll, uh, we'll, we're going to go over these and as I said, they, they, how they come together. And I think you'll find it fascinating. And I think if we, if we keep that, this, uh, this structure in mind, it'll help you, it'll help me as we go through it to say, okay, now I understand why Isaiah is saying this. I understand why Lamentations. I understand why... Uh, Obadiah and all this, and you won't. I won't test you, but I think you'll find. It. But unless you want to test, because from like Noah to Abraham was like four hundred years, wasn't it? Uh, it may be. I'd have to go back. It may be about that. Yes, because that that makes sense. God likes oh. to repeat things be, because you have a lot of time in those early times of um, 
on the Abraham, from Abraham until to, then. Uh, to, um, to like Moses. Oh yeah, like there are many, many years. 400 we, years. Well, yeah, Moses, by the time he shows up on the scene, it's like about 300 it's or like some odd Joseph. years. Yeah, after Joseph. So They didn't remember Joseph. Yeah, they didn't remember much about him. There's probably what was carried down to him, but good questions. So we're going to sing the song, Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah. Um, it's number 200 in the songbook, and uh, we will sing this. Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah. Hope you know this. I'm sure I you do. <laughs> oh, we have this on there. <coughs> Pardon. <coughs> 200. In this book, Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah. <coughs> you ready? I am ready. Yes. Okay, okay. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim. All his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky. Let them praise as give Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted. Far above the earth and sky, let them praises give Jehovah. They were made at his command, then forever he established. His decree shall ever stand. From the earth, O oh, praise Jehovah, all ye floods, ye dragons, all. Fire and hail and snow and vapors, stormy winds that hear him call. Let them praises give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted. Far above the earth and sky, all ye fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains high, creeping things and beasts and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all ye peoples, princes, great earth judges all. Praise his name, young men and maidens, aged men and children small. Let them praises give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted. And his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Wow, that took a lot of energy too. I was <laughs> looking at the camera, but it was showing. Oh, it's showing this. Oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know I was looking at the camera. That's just. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad you had it. Had to get you got to read. Until Were you I, looking? Until okay. I told him. <laughs> okay. Um, now we're going to have Lord's Supper. Hope you have this at home. Uh, of course, we have this available uh, with uh, Robert. If you would like to come by the church, if you don't have this uh, church building, I'm sure Robert will have that furnished for you. Just give him a call, and I'm sure he's here many. And most of May, he's, he's here often. I should say not many days a week, but he, I'm sure he's here often and he'll be happy to oblige you. Um, of course, so that you have this. And of course, if you cannot find this or it's not available or you are in some distant place that you're not able to get this, as we said before, you can always have the, uh, what's that? He's getting his ready. Oh, yes. Okay. Hey, super, super. <laughs> Joe's getting his ready. And he's, I uh, forgot to tell you, Joe is watching us 
from his, uh, his room there, so that's good. I met you, I saw the, the nurse, and I think I embarrassed her, I don't know, I said, I said she was pretty. <laughs> and I, you can just see that way. And all I could see, seemed like a nice lady. <laughs> Joe's getting a kick out of it. I know he likes the nurse too, so. <laughs> don't you, Joe? Yeah, making you happy, that's right. <laughs> so uh, anyway, but honey, don't worry, Judy. I know, I'm okay. You made him turn red. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still married. Okay, so anyway. Not uh, for long. <laughs> <not> for long. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. And uh, so if you, if you don't, if you can't get it, make sure you can get it at a store. You can get the mas, matzo and uh, as well as the, well, just grape juice, that type of thing. It will be helpful for you. Well, let's, uh, let's pray. Our uh, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your wonderful blessings that you give to us. Uh, you've been, well, you've been marvelous. And you, you give us the Bible that we can read these uh, amazing stories. And we, we see a, a greater uh, structure to it that, it leads us to Jesus Christ. And we, we see that there's a logic to how the Bible is put together and how you guided that. And uh, it's amazing how this is put together over this 2000 year period and all these different people writing, just amazing thing to see. Uh, but thank you God for Jesus, because that's what it all leads up to Jesus Christ and uh, you know him dying on the cross all for us. This bread represents the broken body of Christ uh, that he sacrificed for our salvation, for our sins, uh, because he was just beaten with many stripes. And as the word says, by his stripes, we are healed. And so we, we thank you for that, God. We pray for your blessings as we take this. And then afterwards, God, we pray for your blessings on this moment as we think about the cup that represents the body of Christ or the blood of Christ that was uh, shed on the cross for us with much suffering and for our salvation. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'll take this here. And then I'll take the cup, okay. the blood of Christ. And uh, we say, as always, it's time, time for giving as well. Um, of course, some people say, well, you know, I, I'll wait to the service and you can, I actually, you can wait for the service. Some, as you know, this usually comes up first, but we offer you that opportunity if you like to take part of the Lord's Supper at the time. Otherwise, yes, we do have the service that will be recorded too. We have a time of giving. And if you have an opportunity, you know, that's obviously, we encourage you to do that. It is not for us to get rich, uh, we certainly couldn't get rich anyway, but it's not for us, it's basically, um, it's giving from your heart, you're giving to the kingdom of God. And uh, yes, it supports the building, but that's part of the kingdom of God. You know, this building is here to help spread the gospel. And if we can uh, possibly do, we like to expand the kingdom by giving to help uh, missionary work or whatever, or the uh, distribution of Bibles. We have Bibles here, so that people are able to read them and things like this. and so. All of that is good, so uh, let's pray for to give. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the enormous way that you have given us um, eternal life. You've given us material blessings, and you've given us this opportunity, God, to reach others uh, by video, uh, that people can watch us and, and gain and study your word. And we pray that all of this is to your approval and praise. So we, we pray for your blessings on those who give and blessing on the gift itself that it may be magnified and multiplied uh, in the expansion of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you can always push that little donate button too if you want. Well, we have another song and um, it is, um, what it is, what page is I? 154. 154. <clears throat> it's probably more... Um, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's part more in tune with what we were, it's called Give Me the Bible, uh, in what we were have been studying because we're studying about the Bible. And so I guess you could say, give me the scrolls, but that wouldn't work out. Give me the 
Biblioteca. Give me the biblioteca. <laughs> that wouldn't work too well, but as it wouldn't as in terms of poetry. But give me the Bible. <laughs> Basically, it's a wonderful song. So, <laughs> pardon me. <clears throat> <clears throat> give me the Bible. <clears throat> give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest tossed. No storms and hide that radiance people beaming Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost Give me the Bible, holy message shining Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way Precept and promise, law and love combining Till night shall vanish in eternal day Shall I bring that up a Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious word by Jesus spoken, hold a face lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten, teach me the danger of these realms below. That lamp of safety or the gloom shall brighten, that light alone the path of peace can sow. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal. Hold up that splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portals. Show me the glory gliding through this wave. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Should be gilding Jordan's way. I would have to turn it on. Oh, you, huh? It wasn't on? The words. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, you got it, right? So, great song. And uh, we're going to talk more about the Bible uh, next time. And I think you'll find this uh, very enriching as we go through it. It is um, a marvel, and I think what'll happen. The the point of all of this is that it'll, it'll give us um, an additional, I guess, a sense of respect for the Bible, um, reverence for its words, and things like this. And so it helps us. And really, there is a logic to how the Bible is put together. It, interesting, and I think you'll find this very helpful. So uh, let me read this to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and uh, give you peace. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings upon us. Thank you, God, for your, your wonderful guidance. And, um, and thank you, God, for the guidance that you provided to the writers of the Old and the New Testament. We see that they truly were inspired uh, by your work and by your activity in their lives. And we thank you for the activity of the Holy Spirit in their lives and in the activity of the church then and the Old Testament prophets then and the, and the lawgivers and such, which would be Moses, as well as in the church today. And may we not quench it. May we follow you uh, uh, full-hearted and with full of devotion. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, before we close, I want to I missed this last time. We didn't do it last time, but I'm going to do it today to tell you who's with us and then we'll close. Okay. Right? okay. <laughs> so we have, uh, we have Ruth who's here with us. Hi, Ruth. Okay. And then we have Cindy who's here. And then we have Judy who's here. And I think she's still married to me too. 
<laughs> even though I don't, I, the, the nurse means nothing to me, honey. It's okay. I don't even know her name. Maybe it's Judy. <laughs> oh, maybe it's Judy. Oh, that'd be awful. <laughs> Linda's here. Mary's here. Joe's here. And Ashki is here. So we're all here. And the Holy Spirit's here too, I think. I'm sure he is. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad you watched. Glad you're here. May God bless you. We'll see you next time.